Hello everyone, today we're going to be working on an audio device switcher for Windows. Um, Windows has recently made it a slightly more difficult to reach the control panel to change this um, and more than just clicking on this and changing the default output device. So um, this is their move of trying to move things over to their new settings um, thing, whatever that they got going on, but I don't like it. Because I can't pin like this menu on the taskbar, I have to go through here, Let's see, and go here. So I decided to make a new one that I can pin to the taskbar, and it looks like this. Today, what we're going to be working on is everything above this line right here. So showing off the devices or uh, listing them off and setting them to what they possibly could be. So yeah, let's go ahead and get into a new Visual Studio project. And I'll see you there. Hello everyone, here we are in a new WinForms app. Uh, do make sure it is Windows Forms for C Sharp, not a WPS. Um, it won't work with WPS and I've misclicked that quite a few times. So here we are. I'm not going to show you my design as you can already see. I've designed it. I'm not going to go through it, but we are going to go over some of the variables so that we're not confused when we get into the code. So for these drop downs, it's input and output drop down respectively. And then pretty much everything has a self-explanatory name. Set default out to put, uh, output device, set default com output. Same thing for input, but instead of output, it's input. And for the labels, it's default output device label, default output com device, and then same thing for input. Now I do have my own <laughs> custom uh, window control buttons. I got rid of the border. Um, I really don't like it. I will flash the code, so if you really want it to uh, look something like this rather than have the border, you can go ahead and copy that over. And yeah, but we won't go over it. So now that we've gone through all the variables, um, you can go ahead and pause the video, design your thing how you'd like, and um, come back and we'll get into the code. So once you're ready, just go ahead and double click on the form so that it opens up a form when load. And I already have all these um, button functions set up. To get them, you just double click on each button and it'll create a, um, a click event form. Now, before we get into this, we do want to install the package that we're going to use. So just go into project, manage NuGet packages, and then type in audio switcher. And the first thing that comes up is what you want to install. It will install both of these libraries. So once you've done that, we're going to go ahead and get into the code. So first thing is the window controls. So this is what allows you to drag and drop. You just go ahead and add, uh, make a form one mouse down event right over here. And then this actually tells it to drag and drop when you do that. There you go and then for the actual window controls for each of the buttons so we got the exit app which is <laughs> pretty basic minimize is pretty basic and then minimize the tray and notify icon mouse click now when you do make an icon you have to make sure it does have an actual icon otherwise um, it won't show up in the tray I'm actually close my other one so we'll do this um, if you don't have an icon, it just will disappear and you'll have to force close it. So I just called my notify icon one because it's the default name and there's only one of them. And do make sure this code is uh, very specific. If you don't do it like this, you'll end up breaking the app. It's weird. Anyway, now that we're done with that, let's go ahead and get into what you actually came here for. And that's the um, audio device switcher. So if you haven't already, go ahead and add these up at the top. Um, it will do it for you, but... You know, it's easier to do it that way. And we're just going to go ahead and make a core audio controller and call it controller. And then we're going to make four variables that we can access and modify with different functions. So we're going to make a core audio device. We'll actually make four of these and we'll say default output device. And we're just going to copy and paste this four, uh, three times because they have similar names. Okay, default output com device. And then this one's going to be default input device. 
and default input com device. So you obviously have your input and output devices, but applications uh, sort them using their, essentially called their role, and you have communications and multimedia. So you have one for Discord, Skype, blah, 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 and then you have a device for everything else pretty much. So yeah, now that we've made our variables, let's go ahead and get into initialization. So on form load, just go ahead and say controller equals new core audio controller. So initialize it. Now that we've done that, we basically have access to all of its functions. We just need to call them and do things with them. So the first thing we want to do is update the labels. We want to display what we have as our default devices. So we just go ahead and say default if I could type, um, we'll start with output, device equals controller dot default, oops, default um, playback device. So in this library, they call the output device playback and the input device capture devices. And then we just do this four times, so default output. Okay, now we have our four default devices set so that um, we can access them later um, without having to type all of this in. And we can always oops, um, we can always update them. We could actually put this into a function and say update default devices. Um, actually, we might do that right now. I didn't think about doing that earlier. So we can just go ahead and make a private void update default devices. And just go ahead and copy this in and just say update default devices perfect all right now that we've done that we're going to go ahead and set our labels so to do that we just say uh, default um, input com device label or input device label so default input device label is equal to um, actually not it, it's te dot text is equal to um, default input device dot full name. Now there is a few other things, there's like dot name um, and interface name. Um, these only provide you with some of the stuff, like this will give you like headphones or E22Z3 or some crap like that. Um, full name gives you um, what you see here. Um, the actual headset, this is where it really differentiates. And then I've not used the other method, so I don't know what it looks like. But we just want to use full name. And then we just go ahead and do this four times. Okay, once you've done that, um, you can actually go ahead and save it and hit start and see what happens. As we can see, our um, default devices are set up. Obviously, all four of mine are the same. Um, so yeah, now that we got that set up, let's go ahead and start working on our drop downs. Now I do have these a little tall with the font size. Um, you can turn it down. I just like it this tall for uh, usage in like VR and stuff. The other one is mostly not for VR. So now that we've updated our labels. Um, that's the only time we like update all four at the same time but uh let's go ahead and update our drop downs all right so we just go ahead and make this function called update drop downs and put it down here um, now that we've updated our labels we want to go ahead and update um, we just want to populate the drop downs with all the different devices so that we can select one so to do so we want to get access to all the devices on two separate occasions one for input and one for output. So we're going to make two variables. Input devices equals controller dot get capture devices. And this does take a parameter. We'll get to that in a second. We'll do the same thing for output devices. Um, get playback. All right. Now, 
the parameter this thing takes is a device state. So whether it's active, unplugged, disabled, or something like that. So we can just go ahead and say device state dot active since we only want things that we can currently use. If you do want to uh, make a function for enabling your devices, that is possible, but I'm not going to. So now that you have that, we need to go ahead and clear out the dropdowns since we're going to use this not just as a startup. So just to do so, we just say for each dropdown, so input dropdown dot items dot clear. And then same thing for output. Output dropdown dot items dot clear. And now we can go ahead and populate them. To do so, we just go ahead and loop through. So for each input device, uh, for each var device in input devices, what do we want to do? Well, we just want to go ahead and add it. So we just say input dropdown dot items dot add device dot full name. Perfect. Then we just do the same thing for output devices for each div of our device in output devices. Say output dropdown dot items dot add device dot full name. Perfect. Now we can actually go ahead and uh, start this because it is called. And we can ha uh, pop this down and as you can see all our devices show up. So now the next thing we want to do is set up the uh, currently the default selected one that gets set up every time this function is called. So to do so, all we do is say input dropdown dot selected item is equal to, or not two equals, uh, one equal, is equal to default, what is that, um, input device. Um, dot, I know that's correct default input device and we say the input drop down dot text is equal to default input device dot full name all right now we can do the same thing for output okay now that we've done that all we we can go ahead and start it and as we can see our default device is set. Now it is acting a little weird and we can go ahead and fix that really quickly. As you can see, when you select it, it um, goes to the end. Um, that's because we can edit the text, which we don't want the user to do. So to do so, we just go ahead and say at the bottom of this function, or uh, we'll do it before that. Just say um, output dropdown dot dropdown style is equal to Combo box style dot drop down list. There we go. And now we can save that and go ahead and test it out. Perfect. That makes it basically just a list of buttons that can't be changed um, except by the code. So now that we've um, got through all the display aspects of this, let's go ahead and get to the, um, the fun part. So when we want to do this, all we want to do is get access to our um, devices. So this is an output one. So we grab the output devices. We always want to re-grab them for this because we don't know if they changed. You can listen to the cha uh, device changed event, but I know I'm not going to be um, plugging or unplugging things um, at a point where it won't update by the time I get to it. You'll see what I mean in a second. So. Now that we've got our output devices, we go ahead and loop through them again. So for each var device and output devices. Now this is where you want to check because we don't have access to the, vi uh, to the device, um, like the actual device object. We only have access to its name through the dropdowns. So it's relatively simple. Um, we just compare the full name of the device that is set in the output devices box, or uh, yeah, the output devices box, and compare it to the um, device name that we are currently looped through. So we just say if device dot full name 
is equal to output drop down dot text we can just say controller dot default this is output playback device equals device now that sets that we want to go ahead and update the label so we get out of the for each loop and just say um, default output device label is equal to device uh, not device huh controller dot default playback device dot full name um, make sure it's default output device uh, label dot text can't be inverting stuff like that all right so now that we've done that we're just going to go ahead and copy and paste this to the next one the other output one and just add communications here copy and paste that here and output com device much easier than uh than i messed this up i typed in communications and i forgot an m there we go make sure you spell it right <laughs> All right, now that you've done that, we're going to go ahead and move over to the input. OK, I'm back and I've got that code. Um, check it out. It's the same thing, just um, for the other device and we go and hit it start and i'll just go ahead and open up my the windows one that you already know works so i guess it's a good thing to check against playback and we'll set it to the rift communication default default So that's great. Now that we've got that done, um, that's it. Um, obviously, if you want to set both, what you do is um, you just go ahead and say um, you copy this over to here and copy this over to here. Um, so yeah, that's all fine and dandy. Um, so I think that's it, right? I believe that's everything. Oh boy, there's two of them. I already know which one it is. <laughs> um, if you have any questions, please feel free to um, comment them and ask. I will do my best to assist. Um, if you want any other sort of projects that um, you have in mind, I'd be happy to um, take any requests for that. I always um, enjoy a new project. And thanks for watching. Peace.